Welcome to Spoon Feed, where today we're cooking up steak feet spread with a Café de Paris steak sauce. This is my humble attempt to recreate this steak sauce I had at a cafe in Europe that I absolutely fell in love with. I have looked for it at steakhouses in America, but to no avail. I finally decided to create it in my own kitchen. First, let's prep our potatoes. I have three medium-sized russet potatoes that we're going to peel the skin off. We're first going to cut our potatoes as evenly as possible in half inch slices. Then place them flat side down and carefully cut them into fries. We're aiming for close to a thickness of quarter inch on these. Once we have all of our potatoes cut and shaped into fries, we're going to pre-cook these partially by placing them in simmering water for about 6-7 to seven minutes. We ideally want our water to be just below the boiling point. Place your fries into the pot and with the help of a spatula, distribute them across the pan to ensure all the pieces cook evenly. After 7 minutes, we're now going to take our pre-cooked fries out of the pot and place them on a baking sheet lined with some paper towels. Distribute it in an even layer and this now goes into the freezer till we get to frying them. Next, let's get to that sauce I've been reminiscing about. We're gonna begin with a stick of butter in a saucepan on low to medium heat. Allow the butter to begin melting and halfway through, add one roughly chopped shallot and three cloves of garlic that have sliced. With this a quick mix and allow the flavors of the shallots and the garlic to infuse the butter. Once my shallots and garlic have softened, I'm now going to add 8-10 to 10 leaves of basil and about 2 tablespoons of fresh tarragon. Give this a stir and allow to cook for a minute before adding about 1.5 cups of fresh parsley. Give this a stir and cook for 3 minutes till the parsley has softened. Next, we're going to add an additional stick of butter to the pan. Allow it to melt while constantly stirring it and cook it for a further couple of minutes once all of your butter has melted. We're now going to transfer this into a blender and pure this butter and herb mix. Blend it till the butter and the herbs are homogeneous and the color turns into a bright green texture. Pour this back into the same saucepan and set it aside for now. For the next part of our sauce, I have one egg yolk in a bowl to which I'm going to add one tablespoon of Dijon mustard and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Whisk to combine these three, we're forming some type of mayonnaise here. Next, pour a quarter of our herb butter into the bowl and whisk thoroughly to emulsify. This right here would be the perfect herb mayonnaise but we need to add this back into the saucepan to complete the sauce. Whisk till the mayonnaise is incorporated with the butter. Check for seasoning at this point and adjust with some salt and black pepper as per your taste buds. Next, let's prep our meat. I'm using a choice grade ribeye today which is the traditional cut of choice for this recipe. Always pat your steaks dry before seasoning them. The excess moisture on the surface prevents getting a really good sear on them. Once your steak has been patted dry, season generously with kosher salt and black pepper on both sides and give it a quick spanking to ensure the seasoning sticks to the meat. The 
set the stick aside for now and let's get on to our fries. I have some vegetable oil heated up to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. Our fries come straight out of the freezer and into the oil. Cook this for about 10 minutes till golden brown and crispy. Now let's get our focus back on the steak. I have here a cast iron pan with some avocado oil heating up till it almost gets to smoking. We want our pan to be searing hot to build that perfect sear on our steak. We will be quick searing this for the medium wear temperature. This was an inch and a half thick and should roughly take about 3 to 3 and a half minutes on each side. Once we have a steak seared on one side, it's time to flip. Now we're not going to add any butter or garlic or herbs to the pan for this one because our steak sauce has plenty of it. Besides the whole point of the sauce is to do the job that the butter and garlic is meant to do if I was to add it to the pan. I don't want to confuse the flavors of our dish or rather overdo any of it. Once our steak is cooked, take it out of the pan and set aside to rest for all the juices to go back into the meat. Do not, I repeat, do not slice it immediately. Give it the time to rest so all the juices can flow back into it. Did take my fries out of the pan and place them on a baking sheet line with some paper towel to absorb the excess oil. Place them into a bowl and season them with some kosher salt and black pepper and give it a quick toss. After our steak has rested for 6-7 to seven minutes, it's time to slice. We ideally want to rest our steak for the same amount of time as the cooking time. Finally, let's bring this home by placing our steak on a plate with a generous portion of the feeds. Now let's spoon some of that delicious and extravagant sauce on top of our steak. And there you have it, the ideal steak feeds with the Café de Paris steak sauce in your home kitchen. Do give this recipe a try and let me know how it went in the comments. Thank you for checking out this recipe today and leave us a like, share and subscribe to Spoon Feed for more upcoming recipes from around the world.